been a while since I looked into your eyes and saw starlight both bright colors. Hi, good morning, everyone, and welcome to a chilly outside morning review of our Airstream. As promised last week, I'm going to go over some gear that we have, why I choose certain gear, and then various aspects of this particular model of Airstream. Thanks for joining us. So the first thing I'm going to cover is this Proven Lock here. Hi, Pipe. Uh, proven Lock, as you heard in my inside observation, I was able to install this thing super fast on a cold night in the rain and the dark, having never used one before and only have watched a YouTube videos. This, this box shipped to me today from ProvenLocks.com. This is completely unsponsored, by the way, because I'm very impressed with what happened. And I'm going to explain. Three minutes. From opening to being back inside. Three minutes. Actually, three minutes and 18 seconds. For someone who has only watched a YouTube video on a different style and just had received this, and it's cold, and it's rainy, and it's dark, I only use a little light on the end of the jack, which is pretty much not a light. It's just a dim lit bulb. I'm very impressed. That's why I'm here. Thank you to the folks at provenlocks.com for your customer service, your excellent design, and your quick shipping and ease of use. Did I mention it's raining and dark? It is. Three minutes and 18 seconds. It's that fast. So the lock on the bottom, pretty easy to comes off. And this part slides off. That's where your chains are stored. Very handy. And then your interior lock. And that's it. Pretty basic, uh, easy use item. And the trailer is actually attached to the truck. I use this pin lock. And it's just simply slides right through here to lock. Lock into place. That way you can't it up. What happens with this is you undo the latch. This piece on, lock it down, and you install your chains inside of this bucket here. And then you slide it all together, put your lock on, and close the lock. It's that easy. So, something else I really enjoy and I really appreciate from this particular trailer company, I think this was a dealer installed item, with this stretchy cable here. So this thing is uh, from fastwaytrailer.com. I don't know anything about them other than I just read it on the tag there, but this attaches to the truck and it keeps that long loop cable that typically comes with these type breakaway cables, breakaway brake cables installed. So pretty handy, stays out of the way when not in use. I very much appreciate it. So one of the next pieces is our propane tanks. These are 30 pound propane tanks. Two of them standard on most Airstream models and it comes with the shroud and looks all good. So the only extra things that I have up here are the, the attachment for the grill if you decide to use a grill. And I have a six foot hose for if I had an external propane tank or an additional propane tank I could hook up outside. Works just as well. Also have a little therm thermometer outdoor Bluetooth type thermometer goes to a little temperature sensor inside. Pretty handy when I need to know the temperature outside or would like to know the temperature outside. Outside storage. This is the front outside storage compartment of this particular Airstream. It goes all the way to the front edge and comes back to about this rib right here. It's much larger than you would imagine. In here, I keep a few electrical items, extension cords typically, most of those extension cords and other power cord type items stay in the back of the truck. When we are traveling, I put my 50 amp power cord in here. So that's mainly what the storage compartment is what I use it for. So I leave it mostly open, but I keep, I keep our awning tool. 
our stabilizing jack tool. Now, I will tell you that this is the second RV that I have owned that has stabilizing jacks that have the manual option. We had two fifth wheels and they both had a push button leveling system, which was very easy, very convenient. But the first RV that I had with a manual one of these, this system took so long to get down and back up that it made me not want to use it. So I used my drill and I got a little adapter that goes on there, which I'll show you in a moment to make them go up and down. This one is easy enough and quick enough to make me just do the manual piece. It's that easy. So it's not something I'm overly concerned about. It takes me longer to put the blocks down and get those in, this, in a place than it does to roll them up and down with the manual jet. Some other drill related items. I have this really great flashlight. I, I refer to it as the night sun because it is, it is exceptionally bright. I have a 30 amp to 50 amp conversion in case we're at a park that only has 30 amps. Something Airstream has done, I haven't taken this even out of the package yet, but it's a four way lug nut wrench that collapses down to just this basic, easy to store spot. So this is a pretty great piece of gear. I also have a, I also have a four way lug wrench, in, lug wrench in the back of the truck that I use mostly, but that was pretty handy. Here's that drill adapter for the stabilizing jacks. I also have the rod in here for the awning system. So you can see it fits all the way to the corner from right there. So it's pretty, pretty far. Have some coaxial cable for in the event we're in a park that has cable, you can hook up the cable system. And then again, unsponsored, it's just a product that I really like. Is this Aero wash and wax, water free wash and wax system that comes with a mop you can use or a head, and you put these, you put a wet side on one side and a dry side on the other side. I'll show you when we get to the back of the truck tour. But I have a few other bottles of, of cleaning liquids and other things that fills up these bottles up in here as well. So pretty spacious. I'll show you a picture of it empty inside. It also has a light in here, which is really nice too. So. Airstream does a good job of lighting their storage compartments. All right, the next piece is our on-demand water heater here. So this thing is pretty handy. It's a series of copper pipes that when you turn the hot water on, they light up with propane and they get hot. So many people complain that they're take too long or you don't have instant demand hot water, but it takes 10 seconds, maybe 15 seconds at the farthest uh, watering point from here. So the front sink takes the longest. The bathroom is pretty fast, shower is pretty fast. I have no issues with it and I think it's a, a good system. So I'm uh, happy with it. It's the first one that we've had with an on-demand water heater and I've been pretty happy with it so far. No issues, but pretty great tankless water heater. This here is the back side of our refrigerator, and it's just a pretty open space. Drain valve to get the water to drain out, and then there's a little cutout so the water continues to flow out. Some people have issues with this retracting back and water building up in here, so I come out and check this drain on occasion. Then you have your water inlet, city water, and your black tank flush. So when you dump your black tanks, you hear go in here and it sprays water inside the tank, which allows it to wash any extra solids that may not have gone in the initial push out. And then the city water inlet here. You may notice that I don't have the city water inlet hooked up right now because it's cold out and you have to have a heated hose. Now I do have a heated hose, but it's, 50 feet long and I don't need it really here because it's way too long. So, and I don't like having a filter system here banging on the side and things like that. So I have a 90 degree elbow that comes out. And right now I just fill up my tank because it is cold weather and I, I, I don't like having to deal with all the hoses and the extra stuff here at this particular spot. So I fill up the tank on the other side, which we'll get to. 
This is our outdoor furnace. So this is an exhaust fan for the furnace, which is right up under the kitchen cabinetry area. So this thing will run you out. It is extremely warm when it turns on and keeps this thing toasty and gets toasty very, very quickly. Right beside it is our outdoor plug. So if you need to plug things up out here, extension cords and whatnot, that's what you have. This model, like all RVs, or all that I'm aware of, come with an outdoor shower. Now, I have only ever used the outdoor shower function once, and it was to wash off Piper. But this is pretty handy. Um, otherwise, I have my extra key in here. That's okay. So, outdoor shower, it has hot and cold water if you need it, and you just need to wash off something while you're you don't have the hands to touch it, you can hang it on the little shroud there and it'll blow on. So it's good to wash off your feet. It's good to wash off your hands if you had an accident back here with a black or gray water tank. So not bad. It's just not, not a feature that I personally find useful. All right, the next piece is the back bumper area and trunk area as I call it. So the bumper on an Airstream is a outdoor storage. It is not waterproof, it's not water resistant. So things you keep back here should not be things that you don't want to get wet. So pretty nice storage area. I have, I keep all of our chop blocks back here, bicycle block. In a temporary thing, I could put our 50 amp hose back here or 50 amp power cord back here. But for the most part, it's uh, just outdoor things that we need ready access to as we travel. The next part is our underneath the bed storage. So wherever your bed is in an airplane, there's typically an underneath type storage. Now this lock, brand new lock, has proven to be my nemesis. Back here we have some yoga mats, some ski equipment, some extra blanket. So that's mostly what's out here. We don't want to keep them compressed all the time. So that's what's underneath our bed storage back here. Not a whole lot, but this is dry storage, so it has the seals around it, similar to the side compartment. So anything that is in here is relatively safe from moisture. Down here you see that I have my tires covered. This is mainly for storage and UV protection than it is anything else. When you have these things covered in the summertime, and depending on what part of the country you live in, all sorts of critters, spiders specifically, enjoy living behind these things. So when you remove them, remove them at your own risk. The next piece is what most people find scary about an RV. Black tank, gray tank, and drain hose. So I have one drain hose hooked up now. I have a spot back there for two, which I'll show you momentarily. But I have this little elbow here with a clear, clear sight so I can watch as the clear water comes out. On the other end of the drain, I also have a clear 90 degree elbow that goes in the ground. And this hose thing that keeps the hose off the ground and lets the, lets the water flow down with gravity. So it has a nice little cool light out here that not very bright in the daytime, but at nighttime it actually shines up quite well. So this setup here is outside of the RV and the last two RVs we owned, the Montana, it had an indoor, all this was indoor, inside of a door. So it was not exposed to the elements outside. So not that big a deal. Not something I really concern myself with, but when it's time to dump the tanks, I flush the black tank like everybody does. I hook up my black tank flush hose and I run it till it gets clear. Then I usually close the valve and let it fill the tank up some more and flush it again. I go through that cycle a number of times. Then I close it, put a little bit of water in it, and then I go put my tank treatment in. Then I flush the gray tank and let it clean out my hose so it's all ready to go. That is the sequence that you should use if you're not familiar with that already. So. Um, pretty basic setup here. I like it. Now, 
this elbow comes this particular elbow comes with a hook up here and you can squirt water back into the tank I don't know that those are ever useful for the most part because most black tanks have an elbow as soon as you get past this part that goes up into the tank and if you have multiple black tanks this is kind of a waste of time the only really piece where this might come into play is if something gets stuck right here so if, um, solids get stuck here or toilet paper gets stuck here which does happen um, but it, it can allow you to kind of force water back up through there and then let it drain out itself so I have never used it other than just to see what it looked like when I squirted water up in there but outside of that I've never used it once time to jump the tanks first thing I do is I get out my collapsible hose here which is pretty handy and very nice and I have a quick disconnect on this particular model hook it up and I run the hose around to the other side so the fresh water inlet is here the black water tank flush is down here very easy to hook up Now you turn the water on and it sprays in and flushes out the black tank. I like this particular watering point because it's a anti-freeze one. So there's no water in here when it's not in use. So now it's free flowing and water's coming in the other side. Now that I have water coming in a black tank to clean it out, I pull the hose, I pull the valve and all the black tank and all of its condiments come out. And you can see in my clear hose here and in my clear hose here, you can see everything draining out. So it's pretty handy. While the tank's flushing, I typically move the awnings in and out just to check operations of them. And we've had some freezing rain and rain and freezing temperatures lately, so I like to let them dry out so the water doesn't freeze on the canvas. By the time I check all those and go put the main awning out, let them dry for a little bit, the black tank is typically done by that point. So now I will re I will close the valve, let it fill for a moment, reopen it, and then let it drain out again. So now that it's been filling for about two, two minutes or so, pull the valve. And it's still somewhat colored in there, but not too bad. So I'll let this continue to run until it's clear. And then I'll put about a minute of water in it, which gets me at this water pressure here to about 15% full. And then I'll put some tank treatment in it. But it's that simple. Now that the black tank is done draining, I'm gonna switch out the hose and refill the fresh water tank. That will continue to fill until water comes out of here or you check the gauge inside and it's at 100%. This water pressure here is pretty low so it takes some time to fill this tank. Welcome to the bed of the truck. Ford makes it quite nice because they have this ease down tailgate step there. They have a handle also. I don't typically bring this up. Sometimes it can be necessary for climbing up there. Once you're up on the bed, this retracts system that we have up here is actually pretty nice. So back here in the back we have a tub. So these are, you can buy these at 
Lowe's or Home Depot or Costco or multiple places around, maybe Walmart. So they're just regular plastic bins. In this bin, I have outside things for the RV. So extra water hose, heated water hose, water hose fittings, just various tools of the trade, if you will, for outside. And that one we have some camping gear, so backpacks. We have uh, daytime use, quick trip use, tech backpacks. And we have big backpacks for long hiking trips and things like that. Up in the front one, we have some some of Blair's Christmas items, uh, Christmas decorations, pillows and such. I have some tools up there. We have this portable table. So if we're not in an RV park, established RV park, and we need a table outside, we have a, a portable stand-up rubber-made table. Over there, we have some workout gear, uh, medicine balls, kettlebells, TRX bands, a couple of uh, things that we don't don't want to get rusty. I also have weighted sandbag balls down here. Running down the middle is a snowboard. Up underneath the retrax system up at the front is a set of skis. I have my scrubber brush. So this goes with the Aero Cosmetics washing kit. So you put your pad on one side for your wet and your pad on the other side for your dry and you can scrub wet and you can dry it off. This thing is pretty handy and it extends out absurdly far to reach a very long or a very tall RV. So very handy. And I guess it's made for airplanes too, so it needs to reach pretty far. I have a snow removal tool for the windshield pretty well to scrape off snow and ice for the windshield. I have an extra set of grease hitch type balls for different types of trailers. I have another set of multiple tools back here. I have a washing brush, bicycle tire pump, and that's pretty much it. So this day's lot, the Retrax system works very well. It is not waterproof. That is something that I was not ready for or did not know about until it rained very hard. So that's why we have everything inside of a case. We also have drying agents, so the damp grid environment, most stores damp grid things inside each bin. So if in the event that water does get in them, it's not that big a deal. So after it has rained for a number of days, like it's been raining here for the last, I think 12 or 15 days, it's rained in, on the eastern shore of Virginia. I have left this open most of the day today to dry out some of that moisture that is in the bed of the truck. I don't have things out that I'm overly concerned about. Most of this stuff is very durable type deer and can last a long time. So not something I'm super concerned with, but this is the bed of the truck. So with outside storage and under the bed storage, we have plenty of space to keep all the things that we own because this is all the things we own. Oh,